righty. Back better than ever. Here we go with our finals. Paula Murphy takes on Sandy Haas. And what should be a good one. William Stewart here. Ready for our final. Let's pull up our scoreboard here. There we go. Looking up the tail of the tape for these two ladies. For Paula Murphy, it was a top 32 match against Jennifer Dairden. It was a 4-0 win for her with a 61.98 average. Paula Murphy over Donna Floyd, 4-0. Uh, we saw that on stream, 58.94. Another 58.94 over Cheyenne Wilbanks, 4-0. And then... A 4-1 will over win over Michelle Grable. And how about this? A 70.18 average in that one for her. So overall, only dropped one leg on the day is Paula Murphy. Probably averaging somewhere around the 63, 60, 62 range, I would assume. Probably 62. for Sandy Haas. Let's look at the information for her. Or a tail of the tape for her. It was a win for, oh, win over Jackie uh, Dottie. The 56.72, a 58.36 win over Christy Knopfs for nil. A 4-0 win over Christy, or Kim Panty with a 49.69 and a 54.30 4-1 win over Clayanna Brandon. So both of these ladies averaging or uh, only have one leg loss on the day. That is uh, pretty good to see. They have certainly earned their way here. Sandy takes a second to step back here. of disappointment there from Paula. She wanted a little bit more, aka the 20 bed instead of the single one. It's up to Sandy to go ahead and steal this potentially and grab a break of throw. Tops, tops. Tops for the leg. One nil advantage for Paula Murphy over Sandy Haas in this one. See a nice high five there from Sandy and Paula. 
Two individuals that certainly have a lot of respect and a lot of love in between or for each other. Watching from little old New Zealand, Tuma Mullins. Thanks for uh, joining us here. It's nice to see some of those people that tune in from outside the U.S. joining us, letting us know. We got a lot of Australians that join us, a lot of those New Zealanders. We definitely appreciate it. Of course, we get some U.K. people as well as, well, we'll just leave it at the U.K. We get a lot from the Wales area as well, so love to have that. Just a little tidbit, we'll be making our way overseas this year as we head to Blackpool for the match play. You heard that here first. We'll be making our way over there to do some player interviews as well as a little bit more. Maybe do a vlog about, the, about our time there, so looking forward to that. Paula finding that trip 20 bed once again. This is the thing about Paula I've noticed here. Paula is not shy about switching things up and just going to the 19s, whatever she so chooses. Just however she's feeling that day and feeling comfortable, she'll she'll go at it. Including starting off cricket on the 19s. <laughs> just what? <laughs> Did have a chat with Joe for those that have been watching us for a minute as well. Joe Cheney, that is, about his finals with Jason. Just discussed a couple of things with him. Hey, he went some unique routes about that. He goes, What do you mean? I said, Well, what about that 78? He goes, I, I can't. I, I just felt like I could hit that double 19, and that's what he went for. I said, What about the 275? He said, I knew I wasn't going to hit 170 anyway, so why, why leave me that? Oh, okay. All righty. <laughs> Five there for Sandy. Would have liked a little bit more, but it's going to be double top for a 2 0 lead for Paula. And when you're on, you're on. It's a 17 dart leg for Paula Murphy there as she's able to put it away with her second dart. Kudos to her. She'll step right back up. The average of 73.32 in this final. Rice over on YouTube letting us know. He says, Players' Championship in the morning, USA Darts in the evening. Woohoo! Certainly so. Can't forget about the seniors as well. Want to mention that one as 
Leonard Gates came out on top. I don't know about John. Did John win? No, he unfortunately did not. So 3-2. Okay, wow. Uh, definitely a day to have multiple devices accessible, whether it be a laptop, tablet, your phone, your TV, whatever it may be. Staticky. <clears throat> Haas going downstairs here. For potential 95. That in the three. Yeah, it is. So 79 scored for her. Just trying to hold on and produce a couple more trebles than Paula. But right now, Paula's has got the upper hand. He's broke once, looking to hold throw for the second time here. Paula go, well, that seven's out of the way, I guess. <laughs> now just two trip 20s. Why not? Oh, right there. 87 overall. They'll leave 90. for Sandy as she gets the dreaded three. We've all been there, but it's always a dreaded number to see. All in no real reason to go 20s for bowl or even two bowls for tops there. She just kind of Likes to go at the 18s. If she's not able to capitalize, no worries. She's going to return with double top. If there's anything like it, like the last leg, it was a 17 darter on tops for her. See if she can put this one in fairly quickly. Not necessarily a marker there, but she hits a second dart nonetheless. Paula Murphy goes up 3-0 on Sandy Haas. Once again, it's not like Sandy's far off here. It's just a case of a couple triples, but the last go around that dreaded three was one that really hurt her. She would have was able to capitalize with at least a checkout opportunity. Maybe add a little bit of pressure to that tops, but then again, the savvy veteran that is Paula Murphy. You almost sense that she has that what pressure are you talking about mindset. Like she only senses pressure when she may touch a big stage like the lakeside. Because that one is a tough one. I think no matter who you are, if it's the lakeside, the Alexander Palace, your first time there is going to be difficult. You've got to sp speak with Danny Yanson about that one. 
That one was a good combo. The guy next to me just shakes off in disgust. I've won at the alley belly, no big deal. Huh, 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 huh. Danny Baggish. <laughs> Did you say Matt Campbell who? Wow, dude. Wow. <laughs> And cue the text from Matt in three, two, one. start there? What's up with that? Maybe she's just not happy. Maybe it's a slip. I would assume a slip. I don't see her making that move there. Yeah, she collects on the third though. Kudos to her. <clears throat> Come up with the 98 shot there. Right when you think you have an advantage, Paula just continues to do Paula things. There was a ton there to be right behind Sandy in case there's a mistake. Taking a moment to readjust after that first start. Have to do the same myself. Especially when you find yourself three nil down with your opponent on a checkout opportunity with dangerous intentions, let's be honest. Reiterates the number she just said and shakes her head. All right, Haas, get on the board here. Let's see it. Let's get you on the board with one. With a big ton checkout, could produce some confidence. Not meant to be this go around. Paula eyeballing the 84. Does she go 14 for Bull here? No, she goes for the uh, 16 route, the 48. So she'll leave herself 32 if Sandy doesn't hit this leg or this tops here for the leg. Looking at a 3-1 scoreline potentially. 
Oh, she thought that was in. She thought that was in indeed. And it is. She finally gathers it, puts it in with the last dart. And that is where Paula should have possibly thought, man, I need that bull. Look at Sandy right there. <laughs> Little dance. Yeah, I think you, mm, with your opponent sitting on that, you got it. I think you got to go for that bull there. There's no, there's no other ifs, ands, or buts about it. Matter of fact, 100% you got to go at it, but yeah. 3-1 score line here. Sandy yelling at herself there, saying, what is that? What is that? Just gives a little curtsy at the end. <laughs> so a couple moments of struggle indeed during this match, but we're overcoming. It certainly has been a long day of darts for these ladies already. Sandy, as I mentioned before, won that singles 301 yesterday. I believe Paula came out in the semifinals. Is, if I'm not mistaken. Don't know if they played in the blind draw last night or not. Just having our moments here. Paula's trying to work it and get it out of her brain. You can see her and Sandy discuss it. I tell you what, the ladies' game is so much different than the men's game is here. We're seeing those, all these top level ladies, they kind of have a chit chat every once in a while in the middle of their match. You'll see it every so often with the men, but. A little bit more serious stage on the men's side of things than the women's. Granted, both these ladies can be very serious, but they tend to have a moment of of laughter. Making that switch to the downstairs. The 19s is Paula. Just grab that one trip 19. Just 57. So, so far in this leg, honestly, some for forgettable ones. Some wish, ones that you wish you had back, but. Just 57. I would have been keen on the 234 to start off on the 19s or 20s, but either way, you got to have 39, 25 if you're uh, 
at least try to get yourself a look. But you always got to be thinking checkout opportunity. find the two going for the bull she was looking for 25 17 for tops see how seeing he goes about the 141 the typical trip 20 trip 19 route she chooses something a little bit different Tops to go up four to one. For Murphy, the smooth operator. Outside, so Sandy Haas looking to make it 3-2. 81 needed. 57 at 24. She was going 45 route for 36. She probably gets that from Joe. Joe loves the double 18. Side, up to the double five unless she chooses to split. That's exactly what she was trying to do. Instead, it's a single 17. And Sandy thought that one was in just like the last leg that she managed to take out. But like the last leg, she went to the double 10 and hit it her next dart. Does she do that here? exactly what she does. We have a 3-2 score line in our women's final. Crazy. That 
was a break of throw for Sandy Haas her last time up. Did want to mention that if she can hold here, we'll tie our match up and it'll be a best of three from here on out. Sandy elected to stay on the 19s. Was hoping for a 1-3-3 to leave 160. I wonder if Paul is going to do the same thing on this 2-6-5. 95 would leave 170. That's what my play would be. She looks like she's going up top. If there's one thing that's proven to be, don't guess how Paula Murphy is going to go about things because she's got her own way of doing things. Dart, if it would have been a triple, would have been massive for Sandy. Instead, if Paula can hit another triple here, which she just did, going to set up herself for the 44 when she comes back. Give her the option of tops or 32, however she wants to go about that. So 12 for 32, or four, oh, okay, 36, leaving double four for the 4-2 lead inside, down to the two. Inside there as well, it'll be a madhouse if she has an opportunity at it. Take a closer look where she aims at this first dart. Can she use that as a marker? She can in there for Paula Murphy as she is able to capitalize and grab that leg and see it right there. Ricochet off that barrel into the double bed.
Paula off to a good start in this la uh, in this uh, seventh leg. Certainly not the last leg yet. We don't want to say that. We don't want to jinx anybody. Not able to find a triple of value here. This Paula Murphy's off to the races in this seventh leg. <laughs> Santy in the background. <laughs> Looking for a potential 177. Instead, it's a 139. A great shot for Paula Murphy as she sets up a 140 when she returns. Oh my goodness, Paula Murphy, double 10 for the win. Oh, that would have been a magnificent 15 dart leg for her. Double 10, once again, great marker for Paula. Yeah, I'm about to say, I almost, almost wonder if she may step over just a hair on that first start. Maybe closer to a bad marker than a great marker for her, let's be honest. She does line up on the right-hand side of the Aki, so kind of double thinking, maybe a little bit more difficult. She's got opportunities here. And there it is, Paula Murphy. 